Isn't it beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. The legendary Barrington Watson left us some incredible work and a fabulous legacy. And uh, they say it's in the blood. And I think it's true because his son and his grandson are responsible for some artwork that you're going to see this morning that's absolutely going to blow your mind. So we say good morning to Basil Watson and Kai Watson, who are here with us this morning. Father and son, both artists sitting with us on the set and displaying their work. You guys have uh, uh, an exhibition coming up, which is the first in a series of exhibitions being staged at the Devonshire coming yeah. up. That's this weekend, right, Basil? This, this weekend, starting on Thursday. Opening, opening night is Thursday night, and it runs through to Sunday, my April 5th. Okay, so you're the sculptor, right. and you are the painter. Right, yeah. um, and how, how did you, is this something that came from inside you or is it something that you were taught by your dad? The environment what influenced me and um, it seemed like a natural progression to explore the arts. Drawing led to sculpture and uh, once I experienced sculpture then I was hooked mm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. What about you Kai? Um, I think just you know seeing art around me every day it just felt like you know a normal thing to be doing. So but your dad was sculpting, so how did you start to work with canvas? Well, he does a lot of drawings as well. So at an early age, I did more drawing and progressed into painting as I went into, you know, sixth form and then college. So Natural, like yeah. you would just take a piece of paper and yeah. you could sketch out something wonderful. I used to draw Sonic, with. the Hedgehog, you know, um, football players, stuff like that. Very simple stuff, um, no real ambitions as a young, you know, as a young person. Mm -hmm. But as I grew up, I decided... It was something I really loved. So. so you went and studied. You graduated from Wilmers. You went and studied. Can we mm -hmm. see that piece of art again? Hang on, Gary. Don't change it just yet. I want to look at that. Kai, is this, mm -hmm. this is your piece. All right. Yeah. What, what's that called? I call that one Bath. Um, it's from a trip I made last year mm -hmm. to Bath in Trelawney. And it was just a really you know, beautiful place. Uh, you know, people go there for healing and the mineral, the mineral water and so on. Mm -hmm. so. You know, it was something that I just, I had it in me when I left, so I had to record it. You know. So you do, essentially it's like that picture is indelibly yeah, kind of definitely. fastened on your mind, you kind of have to get it out. Right. Yeah. So those are the things that will inspire you, you just go and see something and I'll, that's I'll what see you something, I'll hear something, you know. Um, you will hear something yeah. and you can translate it visually. Well, you know, you do your research before, before you translate it, because you have to, for me, I have to have a cohesive image, you know, work out certain problems. You know, I do my sketches and so on beforehand, but, you know, just through talking to people, you know, I will get ideas and so on. So, okay. Yeah. Basil, there's a theme here, this, the, the sculptures that we have on set, all of women. Yes. Uh, I, I gather that's a, a theme you like to work with, or is this just one particular project that you brought to, sh to show? I, I work almost exclusively with a human figure, and the female figure is my preference. Mm -hmm. um, Mine too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame you. <laughs> and, um, so it is my inspiration, I would say my inspiration. So uh, different, explore the, the human figure in different forms, mm -hmm. whether athletics or in um, more intimate poses. Mm -hmm. Like the one we're looking at yes. now, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. kind of like, is that like seductress or is that like? It, it is a seductive, um, intimate, introspective kind of attitude and mood. Mm -hmm. And how long mm. would something like that take for you to do, a piece like that take for you to do? Well, uh, it goes through different processes and um, the creative process might take a week, two weeks. Uh, it has to be fired um, and cleaned and mounted and so on. So it goes through different stages and quite labor intensive uh, other than just the creative process. So sculpture has that element to it where you have the creative side and you have the technical side. How, how therapeutic is it? it? It seems to me that, one, if you have the, <laughs> the ability, which clearly you do, but wow, if you, you can mold these pieces and almost give them life, does it, mm -hmm. do, you, do you disappear from almost the planet and its, its difficulties while you're e working? Everything has to melt away once you're focusing and you have to live in the now. Mm -hmm. You have to experience it for it to come out. So once I walk into my studio, the rest of the world melts Just away. Disappears. And mm -hmm. um, you have to focus. You learn to focus 100% yeah, on what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. yes. Wow. Do you ever get angry with your work? No. Um, not angry. I get frustrated. Mm. And um, 
you channel it into trying harder or sometimes you have to shift your energies and approach it if in another I was way. thinking about you know I've, I've doubled and I think I have the ability what what should I do